Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now we are in a new week and we are in the month of July. Hey, don't be afraid of anything. Why? Because he has said he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Let that word be in your heart so strong. Meditate on it. Believe it. And let the flow of God's love fill your life. God loves you. And there's nothing that can change that. So strengthen yourself in his love. And see the wonders of his power. Praise God. Before we go into today's broadcast, can we make demand for our daily bread? Are you ready? Say with me, Father. I demand... And I receive from you my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now turn your Bibles with me too. I want to share something we've been talking about following to know. Following to know. See, you don't know Jesus from day one jesus said if you continue in my word then you are my disciples indeed and then you will know the truth if you continue if you follow on if you abide if you stay put you see there are lots of and i'm sharing this with you so that you will be careful there are lots of preachers that are offended at God, many of them. There are a lot of preachers who have come to that place in their life where they feel this thing is not working the way they thought it's supposed to work. And because of that, they are beginning now because they can't quit the ministry. You understand what I'm talking about? Because they've given their whole life to this thing. So they have nowhere else to go. They have nothing else to do. So they are now trying to um, make something out of what they are doing with their senses. I'm telling you the truth. There are those who have just begin to have chosen to apply uh, whatever means possible. So they think the only way now is to begin to exploit people. There are those who, who feel um, if faith, this faith thing is not working anymore, um, let me dabble into other things. Not necessarily diabolical things or, or um, fraudulent things. Now, they, they feel because the greatest temptation a man will have is when he has a congregation to preach to. You may not understand what I just said, but believe me, that itself is a temptation. You find people who it's so difficult for them to pull back. There are preachers who have lost their calling because of their congregation. I'm telling you the truth. Because they want to keep and please their congregation, they lost their calling with God. So it's difficult for them to obey the God that calls them because of the one they, they fear they might lose their congregation. So they begin to preach what the congregation wants to hear. Then there are those who, in order to have a message to preach, they go into intensive studying and learning. The call to the ministry is not academic, is not an academic exercise. I can't sound this enough. It's good to study. It's good to grow. It's good to read. Very important. But please understand me. You don't do the ministry by studying. You do the ministry by the anointing. If the anointing is not there, trust me, you will lead God's people astray, no matter how widely read you are. And, and you see, there is no amount of intelligence that can bring people into God's will. It's not by intelligence. It's by the wisdom of God. 
So if you disconnect your mind from the wisdom of God, you will lead people astray. And there are many preachers who are leading people astray. Well, they are leading those who follow them astray. Because you see, as a child of God, your life is not supposed to be dependent on any preacher. We have pastors. We have um, people we submit to. Yes, but we submit to them in the name of Jesus Christ. It doesn't mean you disconnect yourself from Jesus to submit to a man. No, we all submit to one God. And this is important so that in the day your pastor begins to deviate from the calling, in the day your pastor begins to go into error, you can be there to say, Sir, I don't think this is the way we are supposed to be going. And sometimes you are listening to, you may just be that check to say, ah, let me go back and pray. And then other times their mind is made up. So they go into who, who are you to correct me? You see, as a preacher, when you get to that point where nobody can correct you, that's a very dangerous place, I'm telling you. You see, no matter how close we are to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will not tell you everything. It's just God's design that we are submissive, we are submissive to one another. That's just how God designed it. And even if you see the way the Trinity works, you will understand how we are supposed to walk. The Father glorifies the Son. The Son glorifies the Father. Are you following me? The Holy Spirit testifies about the Son. The Son testifies about the Holy Spirit. You see? So who's greater? No one is greater. But you see how they work together. One testifying about the other. One glorifying the other. The other glorifying the other. That's how it works. And that's how God expects us to work. See, we celebrate ourselves. We submit to ourselves. Paul said it, submitting to one another in the name of the Lord. So if someone walks up to you and says, Sir, uh, please kindly check this thing out. You know, you taught us something. And I, I, I was praying and this thing came to my heart. So I said, let me check it out with you. And you too, when, you, when you're bringing things like that to your pastor, of course, don't use foolish words. Don't say, Pastor, you are wrong. Uh-uh. <laughs> Praise God. But then you, the receiver, however it comes out, don't push it away because the person didn't communicate right. See? Don't say because somebody comes to you and say, ah, Pastor, that thing you taught us on Sunday is wrong, go. I say, who, who, who are you to tell me I'm wrong? And then you don't pay attention to the message. Don't fall into that trap. If someone say, Pastor, what you preach is wrong, hear him out. Why do you think so? Um, I, I read this scripture or the Spirit of God said this to me and said that to me. Take all those informations and go back and check again. It doesn't mean you are wrong. But I'll tell you the truth. You see, one of the benefits of being criticized is if you take it properly, it will help you understand better, even better than the people who are, who are criticizing you. I'm telling you the truth. So if someone criticizes your message, don't just put the person away. Say, I'll never, I don't listen to that. No, listen. Try to understand where they are coming from so that you can help them if need be. There are people who criticize the gospel. I take my time to listen to them. And I see where they are coming from. I see their wisdom and I see their errors. Now, given the opportunity, I'll be able to help them from where they are at. But when you don't listen to them, you just want to enforce your thoughts on them. They too have a right not to listen to you. But if you listen to them, so you can say, 
I heard you say this and this and this. I'm like, oh, wow. You mean you're listening to me? Of course I do. See? That's how, because don't take it that people are foolish. Everybody is wise in his own understanding. See? So when you deal with people, please be humble. Be humble. Learn to listen. And don't just try to defend yourself immediately. Say, okay, I've heard you. If it's something that is clear to you, you can handle it immediately. Explain immediately. Sometimes it may not be immediate. You go back, you check. And I, oh, sometimes you realize that the person is right. Maybe all, everything he says is right. Or sometimes there are a few things that may be right. Point out those right ones. I said, you know, you were right about this. You were right about that. But you see this one. This is what I was communicating. See, an opportunity to win more, one more person. Remember, we're here to win souls. Winning souls is not going knocking on people's doors and, and telling them I've come to preach Christ to you. Winning souls also mean those who think they are smart and want to oppose you. If you win them, you win a great soul. I'm sharing this because many pastors are slipping into offense. Many pastors are slipping into unbelief. They don't realize it because they need to save face. They can't say, I'm quitting the ministry. But then they begin to bring lots of damnable heresies. And their members don't know. They clap for them. They hail them. New revelation. Because the members too, see, if you're not connected to the Lord, you will not know when a man is going into error, especially when he's quoting scriptures. It is the Lord in you that guides you. So it's the Lord that tells you that that thing is wrong. I've seen people that I so much believe in make mistakes in their doctrines. I've seen it. Some I have the opportunity to speak to. Some I don't even have the opportunity to speak to. And I go, wow. And you see, such cases, all you can do is to pray. Now you pray for them. You don't criticize them. You don't say, this man is wrong. No, you pray for them. And sometimes there are some things they have, they have taught wrong that you may have to correct, especially when it comes to your congregation. See, if, if, if your congregation believe in someone because you believe in that person and the person makes an error and you don't have an opportunity to correct the person, now even if you have an opportunity to correct the person, you have a responsibility to teach your congregation the truth. So don't say because someone has gone into error, let it not be as though I am against him. So I will not teach. No, you owe your people the truth. And you don't have to make reference to the error the other man taught. See, except when you're dealing with a clear heretic person. There are people like that. They will listen to nobody. They will just, my agenda is the right agenda. And you wonder which agenda they are pushing. We are called to follow Jesus. And in following Jesus, there, is, there, there, are, there are things you have to do. We have to keep pressing on and pressing on and pressing on till the end. See? But many have not believed indeed. Many have believed for several reasons. There are many people who have believed and hoping that by, by, by such a time, you know, after a few years or months or, you know, something should happen in their lives. And when they don't see those things, they begin to draw back. Remember, he said, if any man draws back, my soul have no pleasure in that one. We are not of them that draw back. We are the, those who believe to the saving of our souls. So we follow the Lord Jesus. We now, he's the one you came to in the first place. You didn't come to a man. Even though a man preached, the man preached Jesus to you. So when you gave your heart to Christ, you gave your heart to Jesus, not a man. The moment you meet Christ, let Christ be the one that 
teaches you. Let him be the one that controls your thoughts, not a man. Not because a man led you to Christ. You must follow everything that he's doing. You follow as long as you see that that one is following Christ. But number one, it is Christ that you received in your heart. And let Christ that you have received be the one to guide you. I hear preachers say sometimes, oh, you, you, you cannot just leave people to the Holy Ghost like that. Why? Why are we so afraid of trusting the Holy Spirit that saved us? I, I always have this, this um, conversation with my wife. You know, sometimes you see how, as ministers of the gospel, you see the efforts we put to help people to stand firm. We pray for them. Sometimes they are sleeping. They don't know we're praying for them. We instruct them. We visit them. You know, sometimes you keep sounding the same thing over and over and over and over. You know, so sometimes, you know, we, 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 we sit down and, and then we say, people didn't really do this for us. See? People didn't come knocking on our doors and we'll be hiding. And, you know how some people, you know, you, you go knock, ah, ah, tell them, I'm not around, I'm not around. Why? See? How did we, how did we, how did we just catch this thing and began to run with it ever since? And never had a real setback in our lives. Never had a moment to think, is this right or is this wrong? Because of the joy we keep seeing ahead. We keep seeing the joy of it ahead. So you wonder, is it not the same Holy Ghost? <laughs> Praise God. But you see, people's response to the Holy Spirit is different. Because, because we've seen some who were lagging and lagging. And suddenly, one day, something you cannot explain just happens in their life. Nothing physical. And then they just catch the fire and they begin to run. And some you've tried and tried and tried and tried. They are just like, like people who are prone to make mistakes. They, they, are, they are just... Huh. <laughs> And there are those you have to hold by the hand. If you leave them for a second, they've gone elsewhere. But brothers and sisters, please pay close attention. We all have been called to Jesus. And we all are to follow Jesus, not a man. And Jesus has given us his spirit to dwell in us. And by that spirit, you see, he said to Jeremiah, he says, this is the covenant that I will make with them in those days. I will put my laws in their hearts. And no one will say to the other, know the Lord, for they will all know me from the least to the greatest. You see, everyone that comes to Christ will not need a teacher, will not need a preacher. Doesn't mean we'll not be preaching again. No, we preach to inspire. We preach to share the wisdom that the Lord has given to us. But while we are preaching, there is another teacher inside you confirming the words that we speak. If that teacher is not there, you may just still be lost. Listen to me. Don't let any man derail you from this journey. Don't let any man derail you. There is an end, and that end is Jesus. He will come, and he's coming not too far from now, believe me. He will come. It doesn't matter what anybody say. Oh, we're hearing this thing for so long. Hey, one day, he will come. And when he comes, where will he find you? Will he find that you have given up? Or will he find that you're standing firm? Check your heart and may the Lord fill your heart with his truth so that when he comes, he will find you waiting for him. My time is up. We're going to continue tomorrow. I pray for you. This thing, 
This is not a time for show. This is a time for serious business with God. I pray that your longing will be the longing to know him and to walk with him. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.